<laughs> morning to you too, James Henry. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Sunrise Safari from South Africa. As you can see, the sun is just starting to come up. And as James mentioned, my name is Tristan. And on camera today, I have got Sebastian. Now, James is not completely wrong. We do have a bird as well. So there is a saddle-built stork that is busy feeding around at Gauri Dam. So remember, it is live. It is interactive. So you can get hold of us, hashtag Safari Live on Twitter or on the YouTube chat. And there's our saddle-built stork. I can't see if it's a male or female yet. Uh, there we go. It's a female. It's got the yellow eye. So the male will have the darker eye with the yellow wattles underneath the beak. And this female has been going about her business with much stamina. She's been up and down all over the place trying to get food and trying to grab anything that she can. And as this dam is getting less and less, so it's becoming shallower and shallower, it's becoming easier for her to hunt. So poor fish and terrapins and various other little aquatic animals like frogs are going to be trapped and they almost become a lot easier to hunt. And this is why the saddlebilt stalk is here, is it's making use of the drying conditions and grabbing whatever it needs. You can see how it works. It uses that long, big beak to go through the water and comb through, basically, and feel out for anything. And these guys are ferocious predators. I've seen them eating quite big terrapins before, so much so that their neck becomes completely disfigured as the terrapin goes down towards the stomach. It's amazing to watch. And this saddlebilt stalk has actually been a bit naughty. It's been trying to chase the gray heron that's also around and the gray heron was fishing and it got something I couldn't see what it was and the stork came running over to try and chase the heron and grab whatever it was but alas the heron was too fast and swallowed before the stork could get there but there's our heron sitting watching the stork approaching poor heron has been shifted around all over Gari Dam this morning as the stork has moved it's a really pleasant way to start the day a beautiful sunrise a not so common bird for us. The saddlebilt storks are birds that we do see every now and then, but their numbers are not great in the in the southern part of Africa. You'll find that once you go into Botswana, Zambia, and north, there's quite a few of them up that way. But this side of the world, there's not too many left. I think the last statistic I heard was there's about 90 breeding pairs left in the Kruger system, which is not very many when you think about it. And so it's a bird that's unfortunately suffered a massive amount of habitat loss as well as poisonings and all kinds of other things from trying to feed off polluted water and things like that. Chris Rogue, you wondering if the saddlebilt stalk would go after baby Egyptian geese? Well, it's possible. I, I wouldn't put it past a saddlebilt stalk. They, like I say, are ferocious predators. They grab all kinds of things. So it wouldn't surprise me that much, but I don't think so. I think in all likelihood, you'll have a s situation where they probably leave the geese alone. It's, it's not something I would rule out, but I've never personally seen them going after any other birds. You can see how the poor heron gets shifted along when the stalk comes in. It's a nice size comparison to give you an idea of just how big these saddlebilt stalks are. That heron stands about the same height as the legs of the stork so it's an interesting sort of size comparison of the two but I've never seen them going after after birds it, I suppose it is possible they seem to though, favor aquatic things and go really after like I say terrapins rept uh, reptiles like monitor lizards and frogs and those kind of things and fish obviously as well but I believe there was a whole territorial mess yesterday with the Egyptian geese where there was Egyptian geese that were chased and there was young ones that unfortunately ended up being separated and had to spend some time on their own or something so I've been looking out to see if there's any young Egyptian geese around by themselves I don't see anything at this stage it looks like just the two adults in the background so I wonder if the little chicks maybe got you reunited with the adults somewhere because there's no chicks with those two I think they're the victorious ousting couple that came in and chased the others away. Patty, you want to know if terrapins are turtles? No, they're not turtles, Patty. They have a very similar lifestyle, but they are not turtles. So the way that we define them is you've got turtles are these chelonians, as they are known, are in water permanently and live their life like that unless they lay eggs but really the 99% of their life is in water then you'll have a terrapin which is semi-aquatic so it spends time in water but it will also spend a lot of time 
out on land and so you'll find them on the banks and you'll find them walking around particularly when we've had a bit of rain going from puddle to puddle and then you will have your um well tortoises that are purely land based that don't go into water so that's the difference between the three of them is tortoise is land turtle is water and terrapin a mix of both we actually don't have any freshwater turtles in South Africa it's just the terrapins that we've got we do have a number of turtles on our coastlines but not in the freshwater areas what have you seen look how quickly it crosses <laughs> it almost looks like it's about to start doing a break dance what were you looking for it obviously saw something maybe it saw a little terrapins head pop up on the surface and it thought I'll go there quickly and try and grab it it is amazing to watch these birds go about their business though something is there Judy you want to know what the life expectancy is of a saddle-billed stork Judy to be honest I'm not a hundred percent sure um, I really actually don't know um, just trying to think what I would what I would imagine I mean it's a large bird so I would say for me maybe 15 years would be my guess but I really I'm not 100% sure maybe somebody else out there knows what it is um, and they can hashtag Safari Live or on the YouTube chat let us know what you, what you think now of course there's birds in captivity obviously would not survive as long well I mean would survive longer than what you would see in the wild so I would go with 15 years in the wild in captivity I don't know maybe double that sometimes 25 years maybe I'm out a little bit out now Craig you want to know if they're solitary birds Craig um, they are not they generally are in pairs and it's quite strange actually just to see the female on her own you normally find these stalks walking around together and, and staying together pretty much permanently it's very seldom that you'll see a saddle built stalk on its own unless of course it's it's got um, it's a juvenile that's trying to go into um, well forge its way in life and find its own territory and find a mate but most of the time we see them they are in pairs and sometimes what you'll find is one will be in a, a dam here and then there'll be another one close by in a dam that's in a sort of similar area but this one seems to be completely on its own and I was saying earlier that it's a female if you look above its beak there you'll see that there's a very yellow circle around the eye and that gives it away quite easily the male doesn't have that circle around the eye it's got this dark eye with these yellow wattles oh there we go frog is it a frog mm. well done there we go a live kill who says the Mara's got all the action <laughs> well done it's been a lot of feverish work to get that right and oh, down it goes well done girl 